2013 to 2016 was the driest four-year sequence since 1938 through 41, I believe. That was a harder time for us to be able to, to keep everything wet and being able to, to manage the water in that, that specific time. You know, the weather didn't help, the hatches were no good. We were in the fourth year of a bad drought, so the trout population was way down. You know, people were really frustrated. And then it, it boiled into downright anger. Anglers tended to blame the irrigators for this because it's the irrigators were using their water. It's their water. Well, I think historically farmers and fishermen saw each other as enemies. They saw their goals as conflicting. You just think of what are they going to do to put their thumb on us to be able to hold us back from being able to accomplish what we need to do. And that's been one of the challenges the farming community's had over the years is everyone comes in and wants to have a program and it's always meant, well, if the farmers would just give up something. So really, our goals for the reservoir and the river are to manage our water supply so that we can pr provide water to the farmers through the season so they can finish their crops. We want to do the best we can at managing that water supply conservatively so that it lasts through the year. In terms of authority, Henry's Fork Foundation has none. We do not own any water rights. We can't determine how much water comes out of the reservoir directly. But the foundation always figured out a way to bring people to the table to sit down and talk through and possibly come up with solutions that work for both sides. There are lots of ways that we can go and work within the water rights system with agricultural producers and irrigation entities to reduce the amount of water that's diverted out of the river. Every gallon of water that we save in irrigation is a gallon of water that can be stored behind Island Park Reservoir and released in the winter months uh, to support the juvenile trout population. More water means a uh, better chance of surviving to grow into the big fish we love to catch. The biggest challenge we face in terms of water is uncertainty. We've seen the very wettest years on record have happened in the last, you know, 30 years and close to the very driest years have happened within a few years of that. Our biggest thing is being able to be sustainable to carry this on for more generations. Just as if you're a fisherman, you have your secret hole and you want to take your grandson and your son back and you want to share that. It's, there's no difference there, really. We want to keep as much water in the reservoir through the winter and, and going into the next spring. So that gives me hope just because now everybody's sort of working toward the same thing. The thing about farms and fish, you need hydrology, you need agriculture, you need water management, you need engineering, you need aquatic ecology, you need to know what the anglers want, you need to know what the farmers need, and that requires you know, a big staff and a lot of capacity in different areas, and we have that now. We get in a trend of wind and, and these irrigation with the high uh, drops on it, you can just see the water floating away and never really hitting the ground. But we're moving to these Eliza packages and with the help of the Henry's Fork Foundation, it has two separate drops and it's about this far from the ground and, it, and we're hoping to be able to see a difference of being able to conserve water and yet we're getting unbelievable crops. It should pay for itself. They're helping us uh, come up with some plans to better manage our water supply, specifically on the technology end. We tried and come up with as good a predictive model as we can as to what the next season is going to look like based on the data we have. All the diversions, all the water supply, and several thousand lines later, you get to a, a prediction of what's going to happen during the water year. With our new you know, high technology precision approach to water management, look what we got. Almost every decision that we make uh, revolves or, or has something to do with those modeling efforts. Storing it scientifically, so to speak, is incredible and the dividends have already paid off and are obvious. The trout population this year is the third largest in the last 25 years, which is pretty remarkable. Farmers are the original conservationists. They just don't speak in that type of language. It's not a, a farmer against fishermen. It's everybody working together to make this all work. What will test the relationship is, is the low water years so when that drought situation happens and hopefully when that does happen there will be that trust. That we can build a strong enough alliance in the good times that when the famine days come that we can realize what our goals are and that we're still working on the same page. If you're helping the farmer conserve water and manage it better you're also helping the fishery and the fishermen. 
I started fishing the Henry's Fork with my dad when I was about seven years old, so that's 60 years ago. Hopefully we'll be trout fishing in 20 years. There's a lot of things that are going on that, that could affect it, that are out of our, you know, out of our hands. Even. You know, I can't predict what's going to happen. No one can. But we've got a lot of smart people, a lot of dedicated people, and uh, if anybody can figure out what could be done, we'll do it.